Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Come on and bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Oh, yes. Come on, y'all. Let's bless the Lord on this morning on July 14. July 14. And I will make no bones about mentioning our current events in this year 2024 because yesterday an assassin assassination attempt was made on our dear President Trump's life. Praise God. Angels must have been everywhere and he was not harmed. Uh, just a little glazing went by him but he got up and he raised up his hand like this to show everybody, fight on, fight, 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 he said, and bravely walked off. Uh, it's a day we will never forget. It's another big mark on the history of America. And furthermore, such an influence to the world. So on this July 14th, I am truly amazed at how the scriptures that I didn't pick, okay? It's programmed in this Bible to be read on July 14th. <clears throat> I want you to listen carefully, and I hope you have your own Bible. It's David, and he's going to listen to wisdom from Nathan, or Nathan, we would say, to obey the Lord. The psalm and the proverb and Romans 2 are just amazing at what you can pick out of there for this event that we are re all reeling from on this morning. So let's get right into it, and I'd ask that you'd pay close attention and let Holy Ghost speak to your heart. First Chronicles chapter 16, picking up with verse 37. We've already begun into this chapter here. First Chronicles chapter 16, picking up with verse 37 and reading on unto chapter 18, verse 17. And it's all about <clears throat> David, their nation's hero. So he, David, left Asap and his brothers there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister before the Ark regularly as every day's work required, and Obed-Edom with his 68 brethren, including Obed-Edom, the son of Jedathan, and Hosa, to be gatekeepers, and Zadok, the priest, and his brethren, the priests, before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place that was at Gibeon to offer burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering regularly, morning and evening, and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel, and with them Haman and Jedatan and the rest who were chosen, who were designated by name to give thanks to the Lord, because, and here's words that ring true today, his mercy endures forever. Did you take that in? His mercy endures forever. We saw mercy on our television sets last night. And with them, Haman and Jedatan, to sound aloud with trumpets and cymbals, and the musical instruments of God. Now the sons of Jedatan were gatekeepers, and then all the people departed, 
every man to his house, and David returned to bless his house. And we move right along to chapter 17 of First Chronicles. Now it came to pass, when David was dwelling in his house, that David said to Natan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under tent curtains. And then Natan said to David, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. But it happened that night that the word of God came to Nathan, Natan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, You shall not build me a house to dwell in, for I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought up Israel, even to this day, but have gone from tent to tent, and from one tabernacle to another. Wherever I have moved about with all Israel, have I ever spoken a word to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you, from the sheepfold, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut off all your enemies from before you and have made you a name like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Does this ring true to all that we looked at last night? about President Trump. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more as previously. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, also, I will subdue all your enemies. Furthermore, I tell you that the Lord, the Lord will build you a house. And it shall be when your days are fulfilled, when you must go to be with your fathers, that I will set up your seed after you, who will be of your sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him who was before you, meaning Saul. And I will establish him in my house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so Nathan, Natan, spoke to David. And then guess what David was impressed to do? And then King David went in and sat before the Lord. And he said, Who am I? O oh Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? And yet this was a small thing in your sight, O oh God, and you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come and have regarded me according to the rank of a man of high degree. O oh Lord God, what more can David say to you for the honor of your servant? For you know your servant, O oh Lord, for your servant's sake. And according to your own heart, 
you have done all this greatness in making known all these great things. Oh, Lord, there is none like you, nor is there any God beside you, according to all that we have heard with, your ears, with our ears. And who is like your people, Israel, the one nation on the earth whom God went to redeem for himself as a people, to make for yourself a name by great and awesome deeds, by driving out nations from before your people, whom you redeemed from Egypt. For you have made your people Israel, your very own people forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. And now, O oh Lord, the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, let it be established forever and do as you have said. So let it be established that your name may be magnified forever saying, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, is Israel's God. And we can say that today, can't we? Over Israel, as they fight on for their very existence. And let the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, oh my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build him a house. Therefore, your servant has found it in his heart to pray before you. And now, Lord, you are God and have promised this goodness to your servant. Now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue before you forever. For you have blessed it, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. And we move right along to chapter 18 of 1 Chronicles. After this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines, subdued them, and took Gath and its towns from the hand of the Philistines. And then he defeated Moab. And the Moabites became David's servants and brought tribute. And David defeated Hadadezer, king of Zobah, as far as Hamat, as he went to establish his power by the river Euphrates. David took from him one thousand chariots, seven thousand horsemen, and twenty thousand foot soldiers. Also David hamstrung all the chariot horses, except that he spared enough of them for one hundred chariots. And then the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer king of Zobah David killed 22,000 of the Syrians. And then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus. And the Syrians became David's servants and brought tribute. So the Lord preserved David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer, and he brought them to Jerusalem. Also from Tibach and from Chun, cities of Hadadezer, David brought a large amount of bronze with which Solomon made the bronze sea, the pillars and the articles of bronze. Now, when Tu, T-O-U, 
king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, he sent Hadaram, his son, to King David to greet him and bless him because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him for Hadadezer had been at war with Tu. This man, that's that man's name, T-O-U. And Hadaram brought with him all kinds of articles of gold, silver, and bronze. King David also dedicated these to the Lord, along with the silver and gold that he had brought from all these nations, from Edom, from Moab, from the people of Ammon, from the Philistines, and from Amalek. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, killed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel and administered judgment and justice. And that's what I want to see happen in America today. After this assassination attempt upon President Trump's life, I want to see administered judgment and justice to all his people. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was recorder. Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Abimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. Shavshah was the scribe. Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And David's sons were chief ministers at the king's side. How about all that? <clears throat> and now we move along to the New Testament, and we will be reading this morning Romans 2. Romans 2, 1 through 24. <clears throat> and this portion is an amazing reflection on all that we were horrified to see on TV last night. Romans 2, verse 1. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. How about that word applying in Washington, D.C. at the moment? For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? The goodness of God leads us to repentance. But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Who, and here is a quote from Psalm 62, verse 12. 
who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also the Greek, but glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, that's how he's going to judge, according to my gospel. <clears throat> Indeed, you are called a Jew and rest on the law and make your boast in God. And you know his will and approve the things that are excellent, being instructed out of the law and are confident that you yourselves are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having the form of knowledge and truth in the law. You, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? For, and we are going to quote now, Isaiah 52, 5. And here's the quote. For, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, as it is written. Whoa. I hope you all read that all over again for yourself. Romans 2, verses 1 through 24. And ask Holy Spirit, to open up your understanding, not only for yourselves and your own life, 
but for all of the severe things that we saw in America yesterday. You will be amazed at how the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and let me not forget to tell you that uh, you don't see Connie here uh, documenting like she usually does. Connie and her husband are on a wonderful trip to France that was given to them by their son and daughter-in-law. But I have heard from her this morning by text. And she has, she's up on all that's happened. So let's pray that they have a wonderful trip. We move right along now to Psalm 10. Psalm 10. And we will read verses 16, 17, and 18. And oh my goodness, this is amazing too. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear. And I love this line. Listen to this next sentence. To do justice to the fatherless, and guess who else? And the oppressed. You will do justice to the oppressed. Who did we see that is oppressed yesterday? Almost be killed. I have thought in my heart. And then I finally heard somebody else say it. President Trump kept looking like this at that time. And that bullet just glazed, glazed above his ear. I'm wondering had he been looking straight forward because it was intended for his head. Who knows? God knows. The hand of God. And as far as I'm concerned, angels must have been there. Let's continue with the reading of the word in verse 18 of Psalm 10. To do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. Wow. Let's all check over our lives, right? Are we oppressing anybody? Do we have kind of a bitey tongue with certain people? We need to look over every, every fellowship, every friendship within our family, with outside our family. Are there things that we need to correct? and get right with the Lord, I'm checking mine out. I'm looking it over. And by the way, I'm home from Ohio. I'm home from Ohio. And I want to thank you for praying for the week that I was gone. And my brother Bob did pass away into the hands of the Lord on Wednesday. All right, on Wednesday, the 20th. He went home and he was ready. And I'm so glad I was there. Thank you. And thank you to Melissa, who has faithfully picked up for me, put on last year's recordings for you, that the recording and the reading of the word might continue every day. Thank you, Melissa. You are a dear sister and a faithful, faithful worker of the Lord. All right. That the man of the earth may oppress no more. And let's finish up 
today's reading with Proverbs 19, verses 8 and 9. I hope you jot that down so that you can read it again for yourself. For that is why I'm here. I'm not here to have a program. I'm here so that Christians who have not opened up their Bibles, perhaps not gone to church, say at home, oh, I'll do my own thing at home. We are to gather together as a body and let all the gifts the Lord has given us flow through everybody, meaning a church or a synagogue. Please, get up, get dressed, go. All right, Proverbs 19, verses 8 and 9. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good. And I love this conclusion. This is verse 9 of Proverbs chapter 19. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies, he who speaks lies. Have your eyes and ears been opened up today to discern between who's speaking truth and who's speaking lies? And a lot of the people who are speaking lies are blaming the other group for speaking lies. So ask Holy Spirit to sort all that out for you. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies shall perish. Shall perish. Wow, what an indictment that is right? And there, my dear brothers and sisters, you have the portion of the Word of God that we continue to read from the one-year Bible, the New King James Version. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's close in prayer and thanksgiving. <clears throat> Wonderful, wonderful Father God, we can come before you and pray and offer thanksgivings because of Jesus, your son, because he came and suffered and paid the price of our sin on the cross to make a way that you would receive our prayers and our presence before you. So, Lord, we are so grateful for that today. We are grateful. We are heard. You care. You love us when we come to you. We end up seeing situations change. Wonderful things happen. Enlightenment. We see and feel depression, discouragement, maybe bitterness, anger, whatever. Leave us as we spend time with you and before your presence. So we thank you, Lord. We give you praise and honor and glory to see a new day. You have given us a new day, everyone, no matter where we are, no matter what's going on in our life or the nation or all the other nations, you allow them to have all the different languages, but you know their minds and their hearts. You speak all the languages. But it's what we do with our tongues, with our minds, with our ears, with our eyes, with our hearts. It's where we walk with our feet, isn't it, Lord? 
that you care about. We are writing our own testimony, minute by minute, and every day. Lord, help us to walk more and more in your righteousness, your truth, your words that you have given us. Help us to hunger and thirst for more of you, more of the words in your Bible that you have given us. Help us not to neglect, Lord, but to be faithful. Precious Father, we hold up Israel right off the top. We hold up your people that you called out, Lord, as a special group to be an example and to be blessed. And Lord, we'd ask that your righteous and wonderful right hand would be over your people, with your people, would guide your people. Lord, we'd ask that Holy Spirit, Rakakodesh, would come and comfort those who have suffered in the terror that has happened there. And the moving on today, oh, everybody's got an opinion about it, but Lord, it's your opinion. It's what we see your hand do. And let us, Lord, have knowledge to determine the acts of the enemies that are war against you and also separate your hand leading your people. Let us, Lord, pray for them continually. Let our mouths speak good things. Let us be kind. Let us envision what would we do if we were in their shoes. A tiny little nation and great countries and lands around them who hate them, hate your people, are determined to try to wipe off the face of the earth, your people. But your hand is upon them. And so, Lord, we come to you, believing in you, believing your word, believing that in the end, they win and all their enemies lose. Come judgment day. Come judgment day. Father God, I hold up America to you. I hold up those in office right now. I pray for them, Lord. I pray that more and more they will be drawn unto you, that they will pick up as the most important thing to read, your word, that they will be guided by your word. Lord, I hold up President Trump. I thank God. I thank God. There was not an assassination yesterday. And Lord, I'd ask you to put angels all around him, all around every member of his family. I'd ask, Lord, that you would be with Melania today, his wife, and comfort her and all of his children, all of President Trump's children, grandchildren. Be with them, Lord. Be with them today. Let them feel your presence. We come against any spirits of fear. You will not enter any member of this family. You will not enter anybody who was at that rally yesterday. Lord Jesus, we'd ask that they would feel your presence today. We give you praise and honor and glory. And Father God, let the truth of yesterday and what was planned to happen all come to light. All come to light, Lord. The truth, not opinion, not facts that aren't true, but true. Precious God, please, 
lead America on for this one reason, that we will still be the people who the most of any country, and there are a lot of countries doing this, we're, we're not special and we're not the only one to put out God's word, to get it out there to people who have not yet heard that they might come to you, they might taste of you, they might find out how wonderful you are. They might receive you, Lord Jesus, into their hearts. They might repent of their sins. And if you're one of those listening to me, please, I'd ask that you wouldn't put it off, but that you would do that now. You would bow your hearts, your heads, your spirits, and with your own voice out loud, repent of any sins you know. Ask the Lord to forgive you and wash you clean by his precious blood that was shed especially for you. You will find great relief. You will find new joy. And his word tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's the joy that gives us strength. Precious Father God, we thank you for the brightness of a new day. We give you all the glory in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah, the Lord and Savior of our souls and all of God's people. Cry a hearty amen and went about your day. He loves you so much, and I love you. We bless you, Connie and Doug, where you are. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Have a great day. Love you. Bye-bye.